Hi everyone, my name is Peter and thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound to make worship keyboard technique and technology easier. A few years ago, I put out a worship keyboard tutorial about playing in the background and I thought it would be this really specific, really kind of niche video that would speak to a few people. Um, but uh, I've come to learn that there's a lot more interest in that than I thought. I've taken a lot of questions over the years. I've had to think a lot more about what I do. And I've come to realize that there's a lot more to it than maybe I put in that original video. Uh, and so in that time, I've learned to answer those questions uh, and probably sharpen my own technique as well. So in this video, I want to talk about three things um, since that original video that I've learned about playing in the background. One of the things I've learned is how to uh, take a more thoughtful approach to fading in. So say we're in a, a worship service and there's just speaking going on. And then we're going to start to make a transition toward uh, a song at the end of the service. So I've learned that there's a, a more thoughtful way to, to fade in. And so what I always do is, is I, I usually almost always follow this technique. Um, so what I do is, first of all, make sure all of my sounds are down. And this is really important. You have to be really thoughtful and, and take your time and make sure this is right because you don't want to um, just come in in too much of a jarring way. Uh, so once all of my sounds are down, I'm going to figure out what key I'm going to be playing in and try to anticipate what key I'm, I'm going to need to be in for the song that I'm leading to. And then what I do is I play the first and fifth scale notes from that song. So in this one, say we're in the key of C major, I'm going to play the first scale note C and the fifth scale note G. Okay, and the reason for that is if, if you've watched other videos, you've probably heard me say that the first scale note and the fifth scale note are going to sound good in almost any chord that you play within the key. And so those that's a really good place to start. And then so what I do is I play those notes, I put my sustain pedal on and hold that, hold those notes with my sustain pedal and then I reach for my pad volume and I very gradually fade it in. And my goal is always to uh, fade in without really anybody noticing because I don't want to detract from what's being said. Usually what I do from that point is I start to play some chords uh, just with the pad. And what I do is I play not, I don't establish a tempo yet. I just kind of play without a, a meter of any kind and just really take my time uh, and allow it to really ease in. And then at some point I bring in the piano sound and just keep it really sparse. Not a lot of playing going on. Keep it really soft. and still just kind of keep it without much of a tempo happening. Okay, but then when it is time to, uh, to bring in the tempo, uh, I want to make sure I start with the right tempo because if I start with the wrong tempo, and the tendency is to start too slow, um, but I want to make sure I'm in the tempo for the, for the song that I need because if I start at the wrong tempo, that'll create an extra transition. Uh, or we might even start the song and realize the tempo is wrong and then have to make an adjustment, which is really awkward. So try to be really clear about the tempo. I'm still not playing a lot of the rhythm of the song, but I'm at least playing the chord changes in tempo. And that's that's been a really good way for me to just fade in um, without creating any distractions. So following the steps of that process. Another thing that I've learned over the years, there are specific techniques, uh, whether they're chord techniques or note techniques or rhythm techniques, to be able to flow with the moment. And that's what you want to do is you want to create a, a, a foundation that supports what's ever being said. And so you want to be able to play soft uh, when there's uh, something softer going on, but then when the dynamic rises, you want to rise with it. And so uh, let me give you an example of each. One of the things I might do uh, when there's a softer dynamic is I might just stick with those first and fifth scale notes. and not playing very many notes in between chord changes. Letting the left hand outline the chords, the root, fifth, and octave of those chords, but just sticking with the first, fifth, and fifth scale notes. You can play them in whatever octave you choose. Okay. Now you might be thinking that seems too simple and or that might be cheating in a way, um, but really what it does is it creates a lot of continuity. Uh, between your chords and you're not trying to do anything impressive at this point uh, but just try to keep things continuous keep it smooth uh, and just create that subtle uh, basis for what's happening at that moment so when the dynamic is lower that's a really good technique when it starts to rise a little bit you want to play 
uh, in a way that supports that without getting out front. Okay, and one way that I do that is using something called ostinato. Ostinato. Uh, it's a repeated rhythm technique. So I might play something like this. So the right hand is doing da 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 da. It's a repeated technique. The left hand is being pretty simple. So it's repeating and it's allowing me to play more notes, um, but it's not uh, it's not repetitive from a note standpoint. It's just repetitive from a rhythm standpoint. Um, one thing I'm not doing is I'm not just playing straight arpeggios of the chord. So I'm not just doing like an F chord. To me, that doesn't really sound good. So there's a way to um, add other notes to it beyond the chord. Uh, but just keeping that pattern just kind of creates this energy underneath what's being said. Uh, so that's a really good technique. And just having those strategies and techniques that you use to flow in the moment are really important. And a third thing that I've learned is how important it is to be in control of your sounds. Um, to know what a good pad sound is and how you can add that. Because a pad sound is so important uh, when we're playing in the background. So a pad sound is simply this just kind of uh, sustained sound that sits underneath your piano playing uh, kind of glues everything together and just sits there um, but it's really important for creating like the right emotion and the right feel so learning that uh, so for example this does not make for a very good pad sound because the, the tone of it is too simple the, the, there needs to be more to the timbre of it okay so this is a much better sound for a pad sound. Uh, a couple of the settings you want to pay attention to. Uh, this one is a bad sound, or it's it's not good because it comes on too fast. Okay, and we call that the attack time. Um, this one, the attack is too slow. So it's just not gonna be um, there when you need it. Uh, so you want to find something, kind of that Goldilocks setting is just right, okay? This one is not good because it goes off too quickly okay, and we call that the release time so that releases too quickly this one releases way too long and so you might be two chords beyond that but it's still holding out the sound from that chord that you just played so everything is going to get muddled and it's still going uh, so you're not going to want you're going to want to mind your release setting as well Okay, so learning how to make those adjustments and just paying attention to things like that. Um, the other thing is just really making sure that you're in control of your sounds because you can have some great sounds going on, but if you're not in control of them, um, they can create a lot of disruption in what you play. So say for example, I'm uh, getting ready to play and I think I'm ready to make this smooth fade in and I start to play and I go, and it's got an arpeggio and a different sound in there and everything like that that's going to really detract from what's being spoken so as keyboard players we're not just responsible for the notes that we play we're responsible for the sounds that we make and so just how important it is to be in control of your sound so uh learning to fade in properly learning those techniques uh, that you need to flow at the moment and being really in control of your sound are three things that i've learned um, since that initial video and like I said, since then, I've realized that there's so many more things uh, to go into detail about playing in the background. And so what I've done is I've actually created another fluent piano course based on just simply playing in the background for your church services. Uh, and it's called Fluent Piano Background. Uh, and you can check that out at fluentpiano.com. But we talk about things like uh, having chord progressions that you can use uh, uh, for, for those different moments where you're not exactly sure where you're going. So you just need to have these kind of standby chord progressions ready to go. Um, specific techniques like note playing techniques, um, rhythm playing techniques that you'll have a really good repertoire uh, of, of ways to flow with the dynamics of a service. And then different ways that you can uh, layer a pad sound and be in control of it. Uh, and then just really, we, we talk a lot about what's really the purpose behind playing in the background and always keeping that in mind through all of these techniques. We talk about that throughout the course. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out uh, at fluentpiano.com. And um, if you haven't seen the first video playing in the background, everything in there is still valid, so you want to make sure you've watched that. I'm guessing you've probably seen it at, the, at this point. But anyway, uh, still some really good points in that. But if you're ready to go further, uh, check out the Fluent Piano background. 
at fluentpiano.com along with the other courses that are available there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.